What I'd like to talk about today is a couple of basic starting points of how to set your turntables up and how to set your record needles. At sure, one of the most common complaints we have among young DJs starting out is my needle skips. It doesn't perform like the guy is in the video. Um, and nine times out of ten, it comes down to two reasons. The cartridge isn't set up for your optimal touch or you haven't given the cartridge adequate time to settle in. What you want to do is line up the diamond so it's directly underneath the edge of the head shell without using a head shell weight. And you want to align it such that the screws are even with each other, but the tip of the diamond and the tip of the head shell should be in a vertical line. If you're looking at it sideways, they should line up right on top of each other. It's approximately 52 millimeters. Now, depending upon your style, something you can do to increase your skip resistance, or if you're using a, a straight arm turntable, if your overhang is too far, you can pull it back. And if we'll take a closer look at J-Rock's needle, we'll notice what J-Rock has done. The edge of the diamond is a little behind the edge of the head shell. Third method is to add a head shell weight. The weight's the metal part between the plastic and the head shell. It's three grams, and it's not, in, it's not intended to increase the force on the record. It's intended to crease, increase the weight at the end of the tone arm, properly setting up your counterbalance, and we'll talk about that in a second. One trick that a lot of DJs who have very aggressive vinyl technique will do is you'll cock the cartridge at an outward angle. This emulates a straight arm turntable by placing the diamond perfectly tangent or at a right angle to the record groove. When you push forward, there's not a natural inward pull, and when you back here, there's not a natural outward pull. Now let's look at the tone arm setup on the record. This will vary slightly from person to person, but in general, you want the tone arm to be level or slightly down. You notice that the, you want the record needle to glide, but you don't want it to be buried. And we'll look at another variation. One of the issues with the 44 series is break-in time. They have a very heavy rubber bearing. And the best way to accelerate the break-in time in addition to practicing is to let your needle sit on the platter like this for a couple hours, two or three nights in a row. One of the things I'd like to demonstrate is how to properly zero out and add weight to a tone arm. So if you have a three and a half gram weight, you know that you have precisely three and a half grams. In traditional turntable fashion, what we want to do is pull the head shell weight, or excuse me, pull the counterweight all the way back, slowly add weight until the needle just floats above the record by itself. That's a little too heavy, so we'll back up. Okay, just barely floating off. This is our zero balance point. Now, if you'll notice closely, there's a gauge of numbers, and these, these number gauges move independently of the counterweight. So if we put it over the record, it's not going to go down. It's just going to do its thing. Okay. Just barely float. And we're going to zero the meter, or the, uh, the, the reference point to zero. At this point, we have no weight on the arm. If you add weight, and just rotate it, that's one gram, that's two grams, that's three grams, four grams, all the way around. We're going to leave it at three and a half. So now when I place the, the needle on... <laughs> That's precisely three grams, which happens to be the recommended tracking force for the 447. Now, something that a lot of DJs will do in the unorthodox domain is reverse the counterweight. And when we reverse the counterweight, you take it off and you put it on backwards. Now, a lot of people do this out of habit, but what you're doing is you're pulling some of the weight further back, so you're not adding as much weight. When you do this, the dial is useless. It doesn't mean anything anymore, and you're setting it up by touch. One important thing is to only use as much weight as necessary to get the skip resistance for your cartridge. Uh, with the Sure cartridges, if you add too much weight, it will increase your skipping. 
in general, if you add too much weight or more weight than necessary, you also increase your record, record wear. And as we talked about earlier, a lot of records are hard to find and we don't want to tear them up unnecessarily. So for this, I'm going to back a little weight off, pat it a little heavy. <laughs> Some factors that are not related to the record needle that affect skipping. The holes inside your record, over time they'll wear. And if the hole becomes loose, you can see that this platter barely moves. But after hours and hours of juggling, this hole will get bigger. And you can see, if you look really closely, there's a few pieces of scotch tape on the inside to take up the extra space. Is your slip mat. Your slip mat should be very, very slippery. Most of the time for scratching, your slip mat should not stop the platter. And if we watch closely the edge of the platter, when I pull backwards, you'll see that the platter doesn't stop. Something else that can cause inconsistent performance is if your tables are on an angle. You want your tables to be level and a level playing surface. At some point, I can make anything skip if I hit it hard enough. <laughs>